It's ready to go. And back in the grab bag for this one. Probably going to go a little longer this time around um, because the last episode was not on uh, users' questions. And the one before that had a little bit of a ramble about the um, the, the national episode. So I want to make up for that and give some, um, give some time back for those. And um, I'm trying to think of what other housekeeping there is. That's about it. So thanks in advance for everyone who's going to tune in or check this out later, either or. Um, like I said, buckle up for this one. Might be a little longer, might not, who knows. I'll just go through a handful of questions and see from there. First question. Do you find yourself eating differently after being on HRT? Um, funny. I uh, literally was texting a friend half an hour ago saying that I have an insane craving for chocolate right now and I can't let this happen again. Um, that said, um, I also try to be mindful about keeping snacks at home because when I eat, I don't, like, my portion size is the package. Um, so, like, and when I, when I, when I eat, I consume is how it goes, right? So, if I have a, uh, if I have some chocolate, for example, I am eating all the chocolate, not just tasting it. Um, so do I find myself eating differently after being on HRT? Um, that's kind of open. So I'll address it on a couple points. Um, cravings. I have never experienced cravings as much as I do, uh, now. In a past life, I, I legitimately don't even remember having cravings. Legitimately don't remember. Um, but now, not only do I get cravings, but they are incredibly specific. Like, it, for example, when it comes to chocolate, and even by expanding on chocolate, it's not even like milk chocolate or whatever. I want dark chocolate is what I want. Um, or if I want something salty, right, I know exactly what I'm looking for in terms of a flavor profile and whatnot. So those are totally new. Um, very welcome. Um, but I, I see that. Now when it comes to my eating habits, um, I don't find myself eating differently in terms of my diet related to HRT specifically, but I would absolutely find myself having a different diet um, and eating behavior when I knew that I was um, going socially full time a year and change ago and whatnot, like, you know, at the end of October of, or yeah, it was October 2019, yeah, that I, um, that I went into trans healthcare. But when I when I affirmed that I knew this was the direction my life was going, so even slightly before that, I'm not ignorant to how hormone replacement therapy and whatnot works, and so I, you know, I made sure to position myself favorably. Um, and and with that, like I, you know, I cut 30 pounds in 30 days prior to that. Even um, I even had my uh, um, my body fat percentage was as low as nine percent. Um, and the reason behind that was when it comes to hormone replacement therapy, your fat distribution changes, whether it's testosterone based or estrogen based. In a testosterone based body, the um, um, the distribution of fat primarily goes towards the belly. And um, yeah, that's about it, right? On a testosterone based body where with an estrogen based body, and I know I've mentioned this in the past, right? But an estrogen based body, um, the uh, fat distribution goes to hips and thighs, boobs, um, the cheeks, and then typically under the skin, pretty much um, evenly, give or take. Uh, but with the, with the primaries, as I mentioned, right? And then just whatever's left um, sent around. And so what I wanted to do was to make sure to remove essentially as much fat as possible from anywhere that'd be typically from testosterone distribution. Um, excuse me. But, uh, and so with that, because when it comes to fitness, you can see 30,000 things of how do I remove fat from my fucking wherever? It doesn't work like that. The body doesn't isolate fat removal. The body doesn't target fat loss in certain areas. It, it doesn't work that way. And so when it comes to consuming your calories and which then get, you know, based on the macros that you use and how they end up getting converted and yada, yada, yada. The, 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 the fat that's getting burnt may actually be from where you're trying to grow fat or like the deposit fat, I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, inadvertently, again, just based on where, well, like what type of workouts you're doing, your diet plan and such and such and the other thing. And so what that also kind of means is fat, left over from a past life, from a testosterone-based body, 
Um, you're not going to remove those things, for example. So in myself, I was always super self-conscious about my belly, still am. And so with that, then, what the heck? And so with that, like I said, I, you know, I, 30 pounds in 30 days, I, uh, like I said, 9% so that I was pretty much cleaning or like starting with a clean slate, which was fantastic. So that when I would be assuming whatever and being on HR key, that the fat distribution is going to pretty much the right place right out of the gate. Um, so when it comes to eating differently, it's just, just mindful of that. And then furthering that, I've, um, I was always mindful since, well, years ago, right? But I was always mindful about like calories in, calories out. For a small period of time, I did like, like calorie counting and whatnot. Um, but, you know, then I just kind of got a sense of, you know, I, I, I like the practice of, you know, just be mindful of what you eat and what you need to do to take care of it, right? So if you're going to go eat an entire bag of Smarties, you're spending some extra time on the treadmill. That's how it works. And so I find myself to be more conscious of that because I do like to, you know, say I've got a pretty decent figure and I do like to take care of myself. I feel like I got dealt some pretty good cards and uh, I want to make sure that's respected. Um, so I find myself more than ever just being mindful of, of what I eat, not necessarily eating differently, um, or pardon me, of how I eat more than eating differently. And then honestly, even on top of that, not even about being on HRT, but it is kind of related in the same way, kind of, sort of, uh, in just the social experience. Um, kind of go out and about, you know, you kind of have to put the bits and pieces away and mindfully consume if you're going to be going out because you don't want to go to the bathroom more than you have to. <laughs> so it's those little practices, right? They're, they're the literally more technical things than, um, than a hormone based desire for food or whatnot, at least for myself, right? Because hormones affect different people in different ways. And then even if they do, then it just goes back to what's your own discipline. I'm very, very firm on not eating after seven, typically. Um, and a lot of that is because um, back when it comes to um, diet and whatnot, your body's metabolism in terms of processing food and, and, and whatnot, it slows down around three hours ish before bedtime. And so my bedtime's nine, ten o'clock. I've finally got a significantly better sleep pattern. Um, and so seven o'clock is kind of like my cutoff. Like I, I'll still eat after if I have to, obviously, right? You know, I don't eat sleep for dinner. <laughs> but um, but I little things like that. I try to be mindful knowing that those disciplines affect how much I need to work out or how much I want to work out and or whatever. So um, those are all things that come in the same universe. But when it comes to something directly related to HRD, my gosh, cravings. Holy shit. Um, no question. No question. Um, I point to HR HRT about that one. What is the most difficult thing you face every day? The clock. I feel like I have so many things to do and such little time to do it. Um, honestly, that's the most difficult thing I face. I, I wish, I wish that I can operate without sleep and just keep working. Like the next thing, the next thing that I need to do later, um, or the next on my to-do list that I need to get done, more particularly, I've got, um, yeah, this much of a drafted email that I need to turn into an email, um, as a follow-up from somebody asking more about my experience on the national, uh, wanting to know more about like why it was as foul as it went, or at least from my perspective, um, and they're willing to amplify that message too. So I just need to convert that into, uh, into an email. And uh, like I said, I might even just expand it to uh, other people I've reached out to as well. Now like CBC's ombudsman got back to me same day that I sent off a concern, right? Directing their editor in chief to get back to me of uh, that experience. I've got two seminars on Tuesday. I've got another seminar to join in on, another sports-based one on Wednesday. I'm trying to think of just some other stuff coming up. I, I, my job, obviously, um, my workouts, like, like, like when it comes to working at home, I don't really have the nine to five more than just be, you know, get work done as it needs to be done, obviously. Um, you know, if the laptop's always open, boss shoots me a text if there's ever like a 911 that needs to get checked out. Um, but even then, when it comes to working out, like my typical workout, let's just, let's just say right now, 15 to 20 minutes for yoga, hour to hour and a half on strength um, or resistance, like typically body weight, but not always. Um, cardio.
cardios anywhere between 50 to 90 minutes like that in itself is obviously a period of time and cleaning up and then just other elements of life um, um definitely a couple hundred tabs I'm following up on in uh, in a tab group that i made on my computer here right i'm going through all those and there's more seminars and sessions uh was actually just part of something last week and if uh, things go the right way i'm going to be getting some feedback about an experience from a celebrity activist the clock the clock is easily the most difficult thing i face every day what's the most important thing to get done right in this period of time that i have to work on it easily the most difficult thing i face fuck i wish i could pause time right or like i said not sleep easily the most difficult thing i face i'm sorry if um to whoever was asking i was looking for <clears throat> um, something along the lines of bigotry, for example. Um, it's not a comfortable thing to face every day, but bigots are a reflection of themselves. My story's getting told. My story's going to get told whether it's going to be from me or from somebody else. Right? So I'm not, I, I don't allow that into my place. I just get shit done. I get shit done for the people who can't do that. And so I just wish that I had more time to get that done. God dang clock. Does your body feel different? Um, um, hmm. you know, <laughs> um, transition is subtle. It's not like you wake up one day and all of a sudden things feel different. Um, but I'm sure it does, right? Like if I could A, B a life experience, I'm sure it does. Um, because like there's absolutely like I've got a different physique. Uh, and it's only continuing to to um, transition right as time goes on. I do know. <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny actually. At a tournament last weekend, I uh, can't remember what I hip checked. It was probably a fence or something like that. But like I've always, 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 always walked close to walls and corners and whatever. It was always just a thing that I did, and I have never hip checked walls or corners of walls anywhere near as much as I have in the last let's say year and a half like god damn it right I am surprised that I haven't put a hole in a wall um but I absolutely credit that to slightly wider slightly wider hips um but otherwise does it feel different it feels great I'm not critical of anything in my body I don't look at a piece of my body and feel uncomfortable or frustrated my, my body feels the, 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 the best it's ever felt is the easiest way that I can say it. like does my body feel different it feels perfect it feels comfortable um, it, it feels right it's so uh, like I, I, I'm sorry that I don't have like a physical thing like oh sure if, if we want to go ahead and talk about some tangible things um, I am very confident that, well, no, I'm not even, I, I don't even need to sound like that. I couldn't open a bag of fuzzy peaches yesterday when I was walking out of the store. So no, <laughs> so <laughs> like seriously, like, you know, going from the person that could open the pickle jar to now needing someone to open a pickle jar. Right. So those are real things. Um, stamina, like my 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 endurance and my strength that i that i have especially when it comes to stuff like sports and whatnot that's from hard work that is 100 percent from hard work and a lot of it too is because i know that my body won't have that same conditioning naturally right as what i was used to because of testosterone production i was gifted with those added benefits of endurance of muscle development and whatnot and so instead i had to cut and restart right so that my body reflects a cisgender female's body right as much as i was able to control with my, with with my own ability and then medicine like i said i couldn't open a bag of fuzzy peaches yesterday it was frustrating because i really wanted candy um so yeah that that's different um but no otherwise it just everything it just feels feels perfect does being on hrt affect walking or running this must be from somebody who uh, acknowledges that i do some fundraising or whatnot because i'm not quiet about that so that's kind of neat oh uh, well as i just alluded to endurance is a thing it is a thing wow it is absolutely a thing in general uh if you have a regular cardio regimen and you fall off it, uh, it takes about a week before things start to like reset. When it comes to cardio versus something like strength. With strength, if you take a week off, sure, technically there's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of reset, but you're nowhere near as much as going back to your starting point as much as cardio. Cardio, after about a week, you're, you fell back significantly. 
And that is absolutely evident more than ever um, with having a different amount of um, stamina and endurance um, after being on HRT. Uh, that absolutely. Uh, and so that, again, is part of the reason why I have such long cardio programs. Because one, I like the calorie management. And two is I want to make sure to not have that much degradation when it counts. Like, it was fantastic to, you know, be like... One of my biggest pet peeves when it'd be playing ball. Ooh, I'm grateful I didn't have to deal with that. But anecdotally, that one of my absolute biggest frustrations when it comes to playing ball is you're in center field or wherever, deep in the field, and you go ahead and you chase a ball down. You run, 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 and you chase a ball down, right? You go ahead and you finish the play. And you're gassed because you just, however many feet it was, right? But like, you went all out, finished the play, end of the inning, and now you're leadoff batter. And it was like, ah! you're up and you're still getting yourself coming in from the field it's fucking tiring like slow down everyone so it's nice to just be able to do some of those like longer plays and not feel that endurance loss or whatnot in terms of physical stuff um again i wish i could compare like to a past life or not like directly to to like have a tangible comparison I'm going to say probably, um, and for two reasons. One, I try to be a little more mindful about um, poise because, you know, if I'm running, I don't want to, you know, still just like to be cute. But, um, and then also just depending on what you're wearing, right? Like what you're wearing is going to affect, you know, how you move. So those for sure, right, might have an impression of, of looking that way. But in terms of HRT, it would affect the stamina side, but otherwise just the physical stuff, right? And like obviously a muscle too, depending on your, your regimen. Um, but I would say just in the nature of transitioning, does transitioning affect walking or running? Yeah, well, it depends on, you know, are you trying to, you know, you want to run around like a gazelle or something, right? <laughs> um, I, I would re read it, or like related to that. And, uh, and, and honestly, it's funny thinking about that, that I, that was commented actually, as a matter of fact, last weekend, um, that a teammate um, says that, you know, I look different when I ran. So, okay, then maybe the answer is yes. But, but, like I said, could be depending on what I was wearing, right? Because I definitely was wearing the same cleats that I used to, but I was wearing different pants, even though they were still ball pants, even though they weren't ball, boys' ball pants anymore, these were women's ball pants, and they are, oh boy, they fit different, right? In a good way, right? But they fit different. And let's also remember that, you know, I just had some stuff managed, right? So, you know, there's just being mindful about when you're running, right? That you're just kind of keeping things in place there. So that, that, they're not directly related to HRT, but I'll just put that together in terms of the same experience. So that might be related in terms of why things may have looked different. Yeah, that's kind of where I go with that. Okay, full disclosure, this is a very um, invasive question that for whomever uh, provided this, like, I am comfortable with answering these questions. It's part of the, my, my, my affirmation to educate when it comes to advocacy and whatnot. Um, and so by, by openly being transparent about it, I'm okay with these types of questions. I want to make it very clear. This is an example of stuff that you don't just ask any trans person as part of casual dialogue, okay? I'll answer these because I don't mind, but we don't do this because we don't do this. Here's why. Have you had any surgeries or plan to? Do you, how do you put everything away and does everything still work? That all came together. We don't just talk about other people's bits. I appreciate the curiosity no question about that. And that's part of the reason why I'm okay with answering these types of questions because that helps educate. But I also don't have stuff like genital dysphoria. So I don't have traumatic feelings or experiences related to any bits and pieces. I still get cheapish when it comes to using words, right? But that's totally different because I'm shy. But like, I'm, I'm more than happy to explain my life experience but we do not be like, oh, I'm just really curious about your life because we don't, right? You know, like we don't just talk about people's junk regardless of who you are, but everyone has this fixation on needing to know about what a trans person is doing with theirs. And I really hope society kind of puts that together. So anyway, 
I'm pretty sure I've answered these questions before anyway, but I'm happy to answer them again. Because believe me, this is just status quo. I get this at least once a week. So first question, have I had any surgeries or plan to? Um, I am on a wait list for an orchiectomy, I believe is how it's pronounced. Um, should actually, let's figure out how it's pronounced. But anyway, orchi is the short form for it. And what that is, is a surgical removal of the testes. Um, and that literally is a technical reasoning behind that. I'm not having kids, I'm 40, right? I'm not having kids. And even if I wanted to have kids, the odds of having them is through the roof. What I would sooner see myself doing is if I was in a relationship and children became an option, I'd be open to looking at adoption because I'm continuing to take hormone blockers because the, you know, the testes are still producing testosterone and so the blockers stop testosterone from doing testosterone things. And so, like I said, is literally a technical solution, right? Turn off the factory, don't need it anymore. Then I don't need to worry about that prescription. I'm grateful that that prescription is covered through work, right? Like through my benefits. But otherwise that's, I think, I, I'm i pretty sure that it was three figures. I actually haven't looked at a receipt in a long while because I don't care. And then just an added benefit is that there's just less luggage right less luggage downstairs to deal with right so they're probably likely the eh, no 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 just considering everything else it's really not but but like they, they um they're, they're just stuff to have to deal with and if i don't have to deal with them then why not so i'm on a wait list for that any other type of surgery honestly no um kind of like what i was saying right at the top of the video my body is perfect to me like well, what was that question does your body feel different it feels as perfect as it can be compared to a past life. I love my body. I love my body. I love everything about my body. I love who I am. I love being able to look at myself in the mirror and say that this this is the hand that I was dealt and I'm making the most of it. Compared to a past life where I would be hyper analyzing every little thing, thinking that, oh, I'm gonna need this or I'm gonna need FFS or I'm gonna need a breast augmentation or what do I do when I need to go ahead and get rid of anything else? Like, like I was in such a difficult place of feeling like the only way to accept myself is to like, to, 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 to like tangibly change how I was born and built in terms of structure. This is just how my life turned out. And I, I love myself. I often think that w would I like, like, it's difficult to compare because I wouldn't have the same fire that I have without living my life. Absolutely, like if I can go back in time to like pre-puberty and go on hormone blockers until I was allowed to go on HRT and intervene with puberty and have a puberty that reflects me, I would have absolutely grown up looking different, for sure. There's no question that I might not have been as tall. Actually, I probably would be as tall but my hands and feet wouldn't be as big as they are. I might not have as much a pronounced chin. Little things like that. Little things that are, that, that just come with a testosterone or estrogen based puberty. My hips would have grown wider naturally, right? Because again, a, an estrogen based puberty is going to have um, a wider, uh, a wider pelvis area. So could I go back in time or would I, would I go back in time and, and opt for the right path if I was presented? Absolutely. But am I going to look at myself in the mirror every day and criticize myself for not having the maybe coulda, woulda, shoulda? Fuck no. No. I love who I am. And I love who I am because I'm on the right path. That's it. I accept myself. That's all I need. I wouldn't change it for the world. When it comes to bottom surgery, I've said before, I don't know what my next relationship's like. I'm not into guys. I don't give a shit about like D and V penetration. Or like fuck that. And even then, when it comes to in like any sort of penetration, I don't fucking care. I I just want to cuddle. Like that's kind of my style. Like I'm just happy to be here. Not to say that like like I can like. You know, depending on my partner, let's just like have a good time, right? But again, with that, like, why do I need to go ahead and, and put myself into a year long worth of bed rest to satisfy the expectation of society? Fuck that. Hashtag normalize the bulge. And then when it comes to FFS, I love my face. I love me. This is me. And I love what I see. When it comes to up top, I'm an athletic person with an athletic body type. I'm very likely not going to have, you know, large 
you know, just large cups for two reasons. One, I have an athletic body type, which typically doesn't have a lot of upstairs fat distribution. And two, I work out, which means that anytime there is fat distribution, I'm burning it off anyway. So no, I, I don't plan on anything like that. I'm not like, I'm not saying never for anything. If I ever did anything like that, it would just be because it's an extension of me loving me, not an expectation provided by society. The amount of times that I hear you're gorgeous or anything similar is not like something that I look for, but I know that so I'm all right. And like I said, I just, I've never taken anyone near as many selfies. I'm just being happy and smiling and laughing. Back to that other question. Does my body feel different? It feels perfect. It feels perfect and it's fantastic. How do you put everything away? Uh, I use athletic tape. There's a lot of different tools that um, trans individuals can use, whether there's certain types of panties are called gaffs. Um, you know, you can purchase them or you can, you know, make some modifications, right? With uh, what's, what's, what's a common one? Using an elastic band from a pair of pantyhose and a sock, I think it is. Kind of, right? Just to have something with, with some sort of like tightness to it. Um, I, I don't like any of those types of things because I don't like the idea of purchasing a thing and be like, oh, here's your transgender underwear. Like, I understand that it's important for others. I just, I can't, I can't buy into it. And honestly, the, the only reason why I talk is because there's stuff that I wear that's like, looks better with a smoother front. But I use tape, right? Simple as that. Should have invested in 3M a while ago. Whether it's athletic tape or, um, uh, what is the series of 3M tape? It's a plastic tape. Um, both work very well and it kind of just depends what you're doing with whatever. Uh, does everything still work? Um, well, I can, I go pee no problem. But otherwise, I have, I have not had like anything intimate with anyone since October 2019, 2018. 2019. Let's just say October 2019 to make it not sound that bad. It's got to be 2019. So I'm getting close to two years of not having any sort of intimate connection with anyone, even myself. <laughs> but what, what I do know is that even in a past life, because I'm assuming we're going to be talking about arousal here, m my connection was with, with who my partner was, was directly related to my arousal. And so since I haven't had a partner in Lord knows how long, I can be confident that it still works. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if things kind of not the same. I, I also kind of don't care. I kind of do if it matters, but I kind of don't because to me it doesn't because kind of like what I was saying earlier, I'm just happy to be here. So I do know compared to a past life, a test, uh, <laughs> a testrogen, a testosterone based body, um, you know, spontaneous erections and whatnot was so common, right? Because that's just part of what testosterone does. Um, absolutely is not part of my life. Um, I've said before, I need a shovel to find my libido. I, uh, I, I don't get that spontaneous physical arousal but I can absolutely still, you know, be like, mm, right? You know, depending on, you know, he's like, oh, okay, you know, he looks nice and whatever. We do not ask those questions in general. I wanna make that clear again to book it, to bookend. Tell me about your piercings. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, I have two on my tummy. The top one's a little irritated right now. I know that we're asking about these, right? But I have two on my tummy. Like I said, this one's just a little irritated right now because of working out and so I'm just taking care of that and then underneath and because I've got a very very tight belly button that I can't I don't know if we can see it here it's very very tight so I can't have a traditional barbell piercing or anything like that so I opted to get a pair there and I might get two there eventually I just want to see this one calm down just a little bit it's just a little irritated dermal piercings for anyone curious dermal piercings will flare up once in a while and when, the, when they get angry you just have to pay attention to them because then otherwise they settle down but because of the nature of the piercing that you can end up having just you know whether it's a little inflammation or whatnot so you just have to remove the um, you know if it's pus or whatever right you know just like anything else right you just go ahead and take a q-tip or whatever and just clean it out and let it go in this case here that's just some scarring um, so I'm just using um, bio oil and whatnot to just bring it down so then when it comes to these piercings so, so well here I'll may as well be a completionist so I've got sure everyone knows so I've got obviously one there and then I've got two here right and so these obviously would be my original piercings on the ears and then this one right here is a piercing that I got with a friend of mine at the same time we have matching piercings 
Um, I was really excited to finally be able to put that back in before I did the episode on the National because I love this piercing so much. And what was happening was that the ball back was having, um, the skin was healing over it, which is kind of weird and fucked up, but all better now. Yeah, my nose piercing at the same time as my ears. So then these ones. So this was a unique set that was done, as we can tell, small, medium, large, and they go along my cheekbone. And you also notice that they're curved. And the reason why I did that was because I, I wanted to have a little bit of storytelling. It was almost like an eyes up here sort of thing um, because they get a lot of attention. Uh, a lot of attention, as a matter of fact, um, which is fantastic, right? Because that's exactly what I was hoping for, to get people to be like, oh, wow, that's, that's amazing. Or to see um, something unique and also be recognizable. Um, the feedback that I get sounds like I'm probably one of the only people who have ever done a piercing like this, which is super cool. Um, I, I get asked often if they hurt. I do not recommend these for anybody who's not comfortable with piercings. My experience, I was fine with, and I'm not taking anything away from um, who pierced me because I know that these are difficult piercings, right? Because there's, the skin is super tight, so... I, I just want to address that, that if you're not comfortable with piercings, this isn't exactly a lot of real estate to do things finally. Myself, I was very stoic, and I knew I needed to be, because if I was going to be squirming around on the table, making things more difficult for her, she would have been, obviously increased her own stress, because she wants to get the job done. And then second, that it might not have turned out to be as fantastic as a result as, as it did. Um, so like I said, that I acknowledge that there's the potential to be an uncomfortable thing for others. But like I said, that I, I stayed stoked. But for me, that's just like, I've said it before. Like, what do you expect? You're getting pierced, right? Things are going to be weird and awkward and uncomfortable. If you don't have that mindset to be ready for that, you are probably shouldn't be getting pierced. I am considering getting one more here. Uh, and this one would be with my birthstone. Boom chewing on that one right now and so that way instead of being diamond all around there would just be one unique one uh, that's a color changing one as a matter of fact right it would be uh, it would go from like red orange to blue green depending on the light so I'm considering that right there uh, that would be kind of but we'll just take some time with that but so that's my piercings I, uh, I I wanted to get them as soon as I start, as soon as I got my ears pierced anyway like you know I got home and I you know, like ah fuck yeah I want to do more and um and that was it. i don't i don't want to like just cover myself up in piercings or anything like that i like the idea of everything having a story and uh that's exactly what these are right that's um being an advocate right and um and an activist and not being afraid to command attention is like i said it's that eyes up here type of thing to get people to pay attention hey i'm speaking i, I absolutely love the feedback from it love it quarter two one more of course, one way I wrote a book on. <laughs> Everything else is one line, and this is an entire card. Well oh, no, put the glasses back on. <laughs> I've been on a committee in my workplace to help make it more gender inclusive, mainly through support centers in my town and the occasional online seminar. Reps from these centers say we're doing great, but it feels like I'm receiving horizontal violence from people in the workplace lately. Am I doing something wrong? Have you experienced anything like this? That is a fantastic question. I want to start with giving the definition of horizontal violence. It's also referred to as, <clears throat> excuse me, broken that sentence. Okay, let's start that over here. Lateral violence is displaced violence directed against one's peers rather than adversary. This construct is one way of explaining minority and minority violence in developed nations. It is a cycle of abuse and its roots lie in factors such as colonization, oppression, intergenerational trauma, uh, and the ongoing experiences of racism and discrimination. There, that's, that's enough. Now, and there's a quote here. Um, it says, lateral violence occurs within marginalized groups where members strike out at each other as a result of being oppressed. The oppressed become the oppressors of themselves and each other. Common behaviors that prevent positive change from occurring include gossiping, bullying, finger pointing, backstabbing, and shunning. So back to the question of feeling like you're experiencing lateral violence or horizontal violence in the workplace. I cannot directly answer if you are doing something wrong because there's information that I don't have. Um, for example, if you're working on making the committee more gender inclusive, is this, are, like, are you approaching this as an individual who would use the gender inclusivity for yourself? 
or are you being an ally? Um, because both of those are two different paths. They might have the same goal, but the optics of it, of course, are in two different courses. Second, your perception of horizontal violence is very possibly valid. I'm not saying it's invalid, but without giving examples, it's tough to know. But considering the question is being asked, I'm going to be confident that what you're experiencing is very similar, if not identical to what I just pulled up as a definition. So are you doing something wrong? I'm going to look at this at face value and I'm going to say no, because you're receiving feedback from centers. Uh, in Winnipeg, for example, we can use something like Rainbow Resource Center as a place who helps workplaces develop their practices so that they become more inclusive um, as a whole, let alone a bunch of other programs too. And if individuals from Rainbow is telling an organization, hey, good job, you're doing excellent things, I'd say they're rather accredited to be able to speak those things. And so if the feedback that you're receiving from your center is positive, saying you're doing great things, I would trust that. I'm sorry that you're experiencing something like horizontal violence because it is difficult. Because regardless if you are a member of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community or if you're an ally and you're receiving such difficulty when you're doing the steps to help, especially if it's possible that the people doing the gossiping, bullying, figure pointing, backstabbing, and shunning aren't doing anything. It's difficult to be motivated is probably the right word because you're trying to create a better place, but you have people who you're trying to do better things for grabbing you by the ankles. What I would recommend you do is to first reach out to the centers and discuss this with them too. And the reason for that is because if they are giving the feedback to your workplace saying that you're doing good, it might they might have resources available for people inside the workplace who are uncomfortable with the, the, the steps forward that you're helping create. And they might be able to help intervene as well, right? Because I'm confident that they have experienced a variety of examples of horizontal violence during all of their other work. And they likely have resource solutions, uh, counseling solutions quite possibly for individuals who are really intervening with the progress. I wouldn't say that you're doing anything wrong as I take this at face value because like I said without knowing all of the details it's very possible for me to look at something and be like oh yeah you're putting up a bunch of transphobic material that's not horizontal violence you're being told straight up you're wrong <laughs> right like so I like without having all of the, the details right I'm not just gonna be like yeah you're doing all right but under the presumption that we're doing all the right things. I wouldn't say that you're doing anything wrong and I can completely understand where you're coming from in terms of the stress, the frustration, the difficulty. And so even if you're part of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community, this goes to the same as anybody who's an ally to it as well. When you're doing the work, the work takes work. The work is difficult. The work is not a cakewalk and the work does not come with rewards does not come with rewards, it does not come with accolades, it doesn't come with pats on the back, it does not come with, you know, here, congratulations, right, you did the thing. These aren't the reasons why the work gets done. The work gets done because the right thing needs to be done, because doing the right thing is the good thing to do. It's difficult to stay motivated to continue to do positive and progressive changes when you're not getting rewarded, right, or compensated or whatever it would be because even if you're getting paid I'm assuming this is just like at, at the workplace I'm assuming this is a committee it's not like you're getting paid more for it it's like being on the health and safety committee for example you do so similarly enough this is just part of your job and so you're not getting extra thing to go with the effort to offset the challenge like while you're facing um, an obstacle is a lot to say is like I, I just I, like I, I just don't want to be part of this and I understand where that comes from but I can also say straight up that that action by doing that is exactly why we're in the situation that we are in our world today. People need to push through, right? And recognize that stuff like horizontal violence, lateral violence, for example, just because somebody is in, a, in, in the same community, for example, doesn't mean that they're right or wrong. So to look past that and look into the behavior. And so going back to your point, if you're recognizing things as 
horizontal violence and seeing that they're not speaking objectively, that they're not speaking with growth, right? Like, I don't know, I can go on and on and on, right? But if they're not, if they're not doing anything that's actually fundamentally helpful, it's no different than any other person. What do you do when you're dealing with a bull? You just, nah, whatever, whatever. Keep squawking. I'm gonna keep walking, you keep squawking no different it doesn't matter what your background is it doesn't matter what community you're part of it doesn't matter right what your your values anything are because the behavior if you're going to go ahead and not be a conducive member of a progressive and well-functioning society useless and your opinion's useless sorry come back when you can do it better speak to um the centers and give the same feedback see if they have resources to assist with that because obviously if there is a concern right like there's a root when it comes to that type of behavior, right? And so it's important to acknowledge that root, but it's not your responsibility. That's a them thing to fix, not a you thing. You're working on the big picture, so keep it up. I'm very happy for that, and thank you. Um, have I experienced anything like this? All the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And what do I do? Keep marching forward, keep marching forward. I look at it the exact same way as white train. What do you think you do when you work against a bunch of resistance you get stronger you can outlast it your endurance goes up i deal with it all the time there are people who it's too much for and it's up to them to decide if they can get over that and even the ones committing horizontal and lateral violence it's up to them to reflect on their own behaviors and wonder if they're doing anything helpful or if they're actually actively creating harm for me, I don't have space to be everyone's counselor. I don't have space to go ahead and tell people what they're doing is wrong, incorrect, invalid, because they've already made their own decision. I'm just gonna keep working, keep working, because I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing is creating meaningful success, right? I know what I'm doing is creating positive change. I am doing those things. They are functionally happening. My resume grows every single day with more places, more outreaches, more gratitude, more thanks, more notes of it's awesome to meet you. It's I've heard great things about you. Thank you for your feedback. Can you be part of this so you can help explain this to our team? These are the things that happen every single day, every single week, and I'm going to march forward. And so the same thing for yourself. You're doing the right thing because it's something that you committed to because you believe in it. Keep working on that. Talk to the centers first, though, because we want to make sure that they are also acknowledging others, right, who are trying to communicate something, but they're doing it very ineffectively. Um, wish you all the best for that. That was a fantastic question. Thank you. Um, please follow up if you feel you need to. That was an awesome question. I love it. Um, it's been an hour. I'm going to go try to find some goddamn chocolate because I'm still craving it. So uh, thanks for everyone who checked this out. Thanks for everyone who's going to check this out later. Um, yeah, well, and we're in fall now, right? So happy fall, everybody, and uh, talk to you later.